Hello everyone. Welcome to This Week on Mars. My name is Ian Hewitt with the Gupta College of Science here at Coastal Carolina University. And this is our weekly uh, video series uh, regarding things going on on Mars, particularly with respect to the Mars 2020 Perseverance rover. So this week I'd like to talk about MOXIE. And well, I'm not really talking about uh, the 1930s term, like that rover's got a lot of MOXIE, see? I'm talking about uh, one of the technology demonstrators on the Mars Perseverance rover. Because one thing is, although the Mars rover is designed to do um, a lot of science and get a lot of good data, and we're expecting a lot of data over like the next 10, 12 years from the rover. At the same time, uh, the overall science program has to look forward to human or crewed missions to Mars. And uh, so one of the things is to have some technology demonstrators on there to prepare for these human missions. And uh, sometimes you have to actually test things on Mars to make sure that they're going to work before you actually send people and test it then. Of course, this is a picture from the movie The Martian, you know, so this is uh, just, I thought that would be kind of a good uh, intro to uh, human missions to Mars. So when you start looking at these human missions to Mars, uh, a lot of it's all about mass, you know, what you carry with you, right? You know, what you have to carry with you, right? That's a, a big thing. The more, the more, the longer you stay, uh, you have to carry more stuff. The more stuff you have to have, the more fuel you have to have to move it. It just keeps adding up. So a lot of the mission planning for about uh, human missions are about mass. It, it's absolutely the biggest challenge for going to Mars, right? I mean, there's lots of challenges, uh, but it's one of the biggest ones, right? Because everything has mass. The crew, uh, of course, equipment, but it's mainly the supplies, the air, food, water, everything you need, fuel, and it all has mass and it all makes a difference. So uh, the spacecraft, of course, spacecraft too, but uh, actually a lot of the big part is like fuel and supplies and equipment. You have to be careful what you carry. Uh, the, this is because people need things. Uh, you know, unlike rovers, rovers are pretty simple. Uh, they don't need very much, uh, but human needs things like, uh, you know, three and a half kilograms of oxygen. I think that's a day. Uh, food prep uh, water, like about two kilograms, you know, drink eight kilograms, uh, water and food, food solids. So that's like 17 kilograms. That's So that's every day, right? And of course, there's various wastes that come out. And uh, so, uh, you know, you need these, you need these things in order to uh, basically keep your crew alive or the, the humans on a mission alive. It certainly is a lot easier with robots because they don't need it, a lot of that stuff. Uh, you know, a little sunlight or in the case of Perseverance because it's got a nuclear power generator really doesn't need very much at all. Um, so, uh, you know, one of the strategies that they're looking at for Mars is to use as much as you can on Mars. And it goes back to the same idea of when um, there was uh, when people took uh, ships over to uh uh, different continents, you know, like say people from Europe came over to the Americas. Uh, they didn't bring water, uh, very much water with them because they figured once they were there, they could get water. Um, so uh, the thing is, one of the things is to, one of the concepts here is that try to use as many resources on Mars as possible because that means you have to carry a lot less with you, right? Uh, so one thing is you could actually um, generate things like oxygen from the Mars atmosphere, so you don't have to carry as much oxygen with you. You can generate fuel from the Mars atmosphere, so you only have to carry enough fuel to get you there. And then part of getting you back is you don't you can uh, actually generate the fuel there. So these are just some, kind of some graphs that basically just show you the idea behind, uh, you know, if you're just bringing most of the stuff from Earth, uh, you get uh, the delivered mass, you know, is like really high. Um, so, uh, but, but of course the, the, the counter is the more stuff you generate on Mars, you have to deliver a lot less, but you have to have a lot more power. It kind of makes sense. Kind of a trade off. So, uh, just to give in, this is called ISRU, uh, which is short for in situ resource utilization, but just basically means using what's there. So the two, the two main things they look for are, uh, generating oxygen, uh, from the atmosphere because the atmosphere of Mars is mostly carbon dioxide, and, uh, and then also uh, generating water. So uh, you, ideally, you're going to get as much water from the ground, H2O, the water on Mars. That would be great. But once you have that, you can actually use that to generate both oxygen, and you can use it to generate propellant. 
Um, so uh, when you generate, so basically you can work on return fuel. So uh, basically there's a, a couple of reactions involved. I will actually talk a little bit about, uh, uh, there's a saboteur reaction, which is uh, carbon dioxide and you know hydrogen. So you can bring hydrogen, it makes the CH4, the methane and the, and the water. Uh, so you can bring hydrogen, hydrogen is actually pretty light. So you can bring some hydrogen, you can make fuel and water. Uh, you can also, once you have water, you can also break that into hydrogen. So you only have to bring a hydrogen. So you could use that for the, the reaction, the above, the saboteur reaction, and you can generate oxygen from it as well. So there's all kinds of different ways you can do that. So uh, how does this relate to the Mars Perseverance rover, right? So we gave it's a bit of a, not just a lecture on, on crewed missions to Mars, but there's an experiment on board, and here's a picture of it. It's called MOXIE. And uh, this is actually a picture of the actual unit being lowered into the rover. Uh, you can kind of see uh, one of the technician's arms in the picture, so you get an idea of the size of it. A uh, small box like this uh, that's on the rover. And it kind of looks, it sits right in that yellow spot here. Um, where you see the yellow, it sits on the side of the rover. And so what it's designed to do is it's designed, designed to test some of this. Now, certainly not the water part, but in terms of generating oxygen from the atmosphere. So what MOXIE does, again, Mars atmosphere is mostly all CO2, carbon dioxide. So what it does is it pulls in carbon dioxide, and for every two carbon dioxide molecules, uh, what it does right here, uh, it actually breaks those apart and forms uh, two carbon uh, monoxide, which it just exhausts, waste products, but then it generates oxygen. So it's actually designed to actually test this technique and to actually generate oxygen on Mars. And again, this would be very important if you had a crewed or human mission to Mars uh, because they would need oxygen to breathe. And, you know, you would be combining it with hydrogen to make water. So uh, what you got is uh, what they actually ran it, and turns out it actually worked very, very well. And oh, this didn't generate a whole lot, 5.37 grams, but that's really not the point. Uh, the point is to actually produce oxygen and produce very, very pure oxygen. And it was like 99% pure, the oxygen that they, they uh, produced. Uh, so uh, it turns out it worked very, very well. And uh, so uh, it took a little time to warm up. But see, once it warmed up, it actually uh, generated oxygen in a pretty reasonable time frame. So it's actually a very exciting technology demonstrator because it, it shows that you can actually produce some of the stuff you need on Mars using resources that are there. And that's just, that's very, very important. So it actually, this technology does work. So this is one of those uh, small steps uh, toward uh, sending a crew toward Mars. And, uh, you know, and, and shows that uh, certainly the, uh, the theories are it, theories about uh, how to use that is very possible. OK, that's it for this week. Uh, tune in again next week for more information from Mars. Thanks and have a great week.